Looking back at the 2016 quarterback draft class, there was a lot of interesting selections where teams got tremendous value for their pick, but there was also some situations where the front office probably won another chance at it. But of course that is the nature of the draft after all, and this is going to be grading the 6 most notable quarterbacks from that draft. So I don't want to take up too much time, so let's just get into it. Jared Goff was the first overall pick in the 2016 draft out of California, and he would stay close to home as he was picked by the recently relocated Los Angeles Rams. Goff would go on to start just seven games in his rookie season, and the Rams didn't fare so well in those games as they would lose all seven of them. Of course it wasn't all on Jared, but he still didn't play very well, and you quickly heard the narrative of Jared Goff becoming a draft bust. Fortunately for LA and Goff, they both turned around in the very next season where the Rams won 11 games and Goff led the league in yards per completion. This would get even better in 2018 where LA would make a Super Bowl run, and this was an awesome season for Goff where he had over 4,500 yards and 32 touchdowns. Of course the Rams would go on to lose a Super Bowl to the Patriots where Goff did not play a very good game. This would of course lead to two more mediocre seasons in 2019 and 2020 for Jared, and eventually he would be traded to the Detroit Lions in 2021. And his time in Detroit has been a bit of a revival for his career so far, as he looks like a capable NFL quarterback the past two seasons. I would give this pick a B- overall, just due to the fact that Jared Goff was the first pick in the draft, and you really want a true franchise player when you select a guy in the top 4 or 5 picks like that. And if Goff had fell in the first round or even into the second round, this obviously would have been a much higher grade as well. Carson Wentz went second overall in this draft to the Philadelphia Eagles, and his career has gone completely opposite to the career of Jared Goff. Carson started off his career on top as it only took him two seasons to be looked at as a real MVP candidate. The 2017 season was a truly great one for Philly as they brought home their first ever Lombardi trophy. The issue was that they made the Super Bowl run with the guy that was Carson's backup, Nick Foles. Foles was of course playing because Wentz was injured late in 2017 where he was having a career year. But Nick was a free agent after the Super Bowl victory, and the Eagles had a big decision to make between the two quarterbacks. Philly obviously chose Wentz as they signed him to a big four-year $128 million contract in 2019. But after this deal, Carson Wentz has looked like a bottom half of the league quarterback. He's bounced around to three teams in as many years, and in 2023 Carson is currently a free agent after he was released by the Commanders. And right now, I would give this pick a D-plus for how his career has went so far, and also how his career looks to project in the future. In the first round still had one more quarterback to go, and it was Paxton and Lynch to the Denver Broncos with the 26th overall pick. And every season that goes by somehow makes this pick look even worse. Paxton only played two seasons in the NFL for the Broncos, and he started only four games over that span. He also threw as many touchdowns as interceptions in those games, which was four each. This is obviously not what you expect out of the first round player. And after the NFL, he has had stints in the CFL, the USFL, and now the XFL. And Lynch is currently playing in the XFL where it hasn't looked too promising for him so far, honestly. And I would give this selection by the Denver Broncos the all dreaded F grade. NFL teams weren't done picking bad quarterbacks in this draft because the New York Jets decided to take Christian Hackenberg with their second round pick in 2016. Hackenberg was a three year starter at Penn State, but there were very few people that thought he could be something at the next level. He was not anything at the NFL level as during his final year in Penn State, he only completed 54% of his passes. This is really not good and I'm not quite sure what the Jets were expecting when making this selection. Hackenberg would never play a regular season game in the NFL and for that reason this draft has back to back F grades on quarterbacks. Jacoby Brissett was the next quarterback to go as he was selected with the 91st overall pick by the New England Patriots. He would only play in three games in his one and only season in New England, but Brissett would flash enough talent over those few games that the Colts were willing to make a trade for the young quarterback at the start of the 2017 season after Andrew Luck went down. Jacoby would go on to have a decent first season as a starter, but Indy won only four games the whole year. Brissett would go on to get a few more chances to start in the NFL as he was always a productive player, but there just seems like there is always someone getting the chance over Jacoby. First it was Andrew Luck coming back from injury in Indy, then it was Philip Rivers getting the nod, and now in his two seasons post Indianapolis, he's had to play second fiddle to Tua and he who shall not be named. But Brissett did sign a one year deal with the Commanders this offseason, so hopefully he catches on there and something similar to Geno Smith in Seattle. Overall, I would give this third round selection of Jacoby Brissett a B, with I think a big chance to increase if he gets a real shot to start in the NFL. And the final quarterback we are going to talk about in this draft is the fourth round pick of the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott. And Dak got his chance to start immediately due to Tony Romo having injury issues during the final years of his career. Prescott took this chance and ran with it when he brought home the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. 
He would go on to have three more productive years as Dallas' starter until tragedy struck in the 2020 season when Dak had a terrible leg injury. But he took that time away to make himself even stronger and when he came back he looked like the same old Dak everyone knew, leading the Cowboys to a 12-1 season and a playoff berth. It was a step back in 2022. Even though Prescott was banged up a little, he only played in 12 games and turned the ball over 15 times. But the Cowboys would win an ugly game in the wildcard round against Tom Brady and Tampa Bay. Unfortunately, this run wouldn't last long as they met up with the 49ers in the next round where that magic ran out and the Prescott offense only put up 6 points. And that is where we sit with Dak now. And I'm going to give this pick by the Cowboys an A. It's really difficult to find a starting caliber quarterback in the NFL and Dallas managed to do that with a day 2 pick. That's amazing value in the draft. Like I said before, this draft had a lot of puzzling picks for good and bad reasons, but it was one that shaped major moves in the future of the league, like the Jared Goff trade, or the fact that Dak has been the Dallas Cowboys starting quarterback for the past 7 years. And this draft did feature more quarterbacks being taken throughout, but these were the 6 that I thought were the most notable. And that is how I thought this draft class graded out, I hope you did enjoy, and I hope to see you in the next one.